name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have great sin in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most previous fault. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the last of Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of this sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of the nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah 
all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Our responsorial song. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O oh God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba will bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Jesus Christ through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Jerusalem say, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word 
that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. They opened up their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. Good evening, Father. May I begin with just a couple of announcements. As you know, our CCD classes start again tomorrow morning. So please, if you have a child or grandchild needing to go to CCD, please make sure they show up. Okay, good. Especially our high schoolers, for our high schoolers will start tomorrow. Uh, now that I can be free to teach. Okay, so that's a good, I don't know if that's such a good thing. I'm their teacher. <laughs> now, uh, a favor please, from the gentleman who normally usher, would you do me this favor? In the vestibule, there is a basket, and in the basket are containers, <coughs> plastic bags, with water, chalk, and the blessing for uh, the new, the epiphany blessing that we would put on our doors. Would y'all gentlemen pass those out to the families, one per family, please, now? Hop up. Tup, tup. <laughs> Thank y'all for doing that. I forgot to ask you in the beginning. That way, I know some people exit the side doors and they do not go through the front. So this way they too can receive uh, blessings. <laughs> Okay. Now, this is an old tradition that we brought back again last year. Plus, we're also going to bring back another old tradition. Uh, and the other old tradition we're bringing back is candle mass. Normally, on the priest of the presentation of Jesus, since he is the light of the world, priests would bless candles that you could have for your home. And so we're going to do that again this year, blessing candles. Now, in your bulletin will be a packet, a, a, a sheet, where if you would like to purchase a beeswax candle that will later be blessed, you have that opportunity, you can fill out that information. And please understand, they sell them by the case. You don't have to buy a case, you need only buy one. But if we don't have enough for a particular case, we will just give you the money back, okay? Uh, I just wanna make sure that that opportunity is available for you, okay? Pretty simple. Now. All these things we, we bring back, they're part of our faith and they're good things. Uh, and please understand, now, tonight, the water that you receive in that bag, it is blessed water, okay? It's not epiphany water. It's blessed water. Epiphany water is different for, I looked it up, and I, I have the ability to do it, it's a one hour, give or take, all in Latin, prayer service to bless the water with exorcisms. And I mean, it is a beautiful thing. I just don't have the skill yet. 
So uh, who knows? Maybe in the future we do that for you. And that's a neat thing. Okay? All right. Now, you're learning all of these neat things, aren't you? It's like, do you know there's a difference between blessed water and holy water? Ah, in the older rite of the church, of which Archbishop Brody has given me the faculty to still do the older rite, a priest would exercise and bless salt. Then he would exercise and bless water. Then he would combine the two, say another prayer of exorcism and blessing, and you would have exercised holy water. Now, blessed water is when me or one of the deacons imparts a blessing upon water. When you walk in to our church, because I have that faculty to make the old style holy water, in the fonts is the old style holy water, which actually spiritually is more conducive for you than just the blessed water. So I try to do these things for you whenever I find out because I want you to be saints. I want you to be holy. And any little thing I find that can assist you, I want to offer it to you. Okay? All right. Now, like this reflection that we're taking the year to do on the Eucharist. And I want to begin in the beginning. Actually, before in the beginning as recorded in the book of Genesis. For there was a time before time. I was reading from an old, wise person. And they asked him to give a statement on, because the guy was a, a brilliant scientist. They asked him to give a statement on creation in the beginning. And he said something that I thought very, uh, very profound. He said, he took comfort in the knowledge that there were some truths too great for the mind of man. <clears throat> Stop and think about our universe. I know some of you are experts with science. I am not. I don't know chemistry or biology, zoology to that degree that you possess that knowledge. Heck, to be honest with you, I don't think I could prepare a small engine on a lawnmower. Some of you, many of you could do these things and you know you have the tools and the knowledge to do that and you know how complex things are. Our bodies, the complexity within our body. Then you add that to the universe and you look at how perfect it is how we orbit around the sun, but we never veer from our orbit. Or how the moon orbits around the earth, but it never crashes down into the earth. You think about the laws of physics and nature. Wow. <coughs> and if you stand outside, and that's if there's any benefit from going through a hurricane when we lose power, one of the neatest things is to go stand outside and look at the stars when the lights of the city are not drowning out the beauty of night. And you look at the stars and you just feel so minute in comparison. How vast the universe is. How mysterious everything is. And he said he takes comfort that in the midst of all of that, there are some ministries too great even for the mind of man. When we think of young people today, I've heard many a young person, I do not believe, I do not believe, and I think, oh my God, look at all the great scientists in the past. Some of our great scientists who were Catholic, either priests or nuns, or they were Catholic laymen and laywomen. And they even themselves came to the point where they said, there is a divine order to things that we can't explain. And one of the things that they 
looked at was in the beginning. And we've probably all heard the story that in the beginning there was a quote, big bang, an older principle that people sometimes suggest still, even to our day. And how life just spontaneously came. And then they looked and said, well, where did all the elements come from? And then how did the elements, all that being said, think of it this way. Our Bible. It is irrational. The Bible has no intelligence about it. It cannot, in its in and of itself, choose to move and come back to me. Now, I would like you to use your intellect. You think real hard and get that Bible to come to me. No, it doesn't work that way. For that Bible to move, something has to move it. What is the thing that moves the elements in the beginning? Because if they're there, something has to move them. And secondly, how did the Bible get there? I placed it there. Well, how did the elements in the beginning get to where they were? Something had to place them there, some great intelligence. And what we say is that a great intelligence, that first cause, is God. And when God created, and the beauty is that the writer of Genesis, they, they, they don't know the intricacies of the cosmos, the stars, our anatomy, they're having to explain it in a story. And they start the story with, in the beginning, God created. And how does he create? With the word. Not just a word, the word. Which John would bring up in the prologue to his gospel. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The word was God. So God creates. And he creates. Why? Because he's God. He's generous. He did not have to create. God is complete and perfect within himself. But he chooses to share. That's love. It's a, a, a desire to want to share and joy with others. So God chooses to share. And so when God first creates, and I know this is going to be a little of a, a repeat for some of you, you've probably heard me speak about this, but when God creates first, he creates those things that are like himself, spiritual beings. This is not found in sacred scripture. This is later theologians, great theologians, greater than I could ever aspire to become. I mean, I read their writings and realize just how feeble my own intellect is. And I, I read like Thomas Aquinas, who spoke about how when God first created being spiritual, he created the spiritual beings. And how we portray the spiritual beings, we call them angels. And we portray them you know, an angel would have wings of a, of a great eagle. Now, do angels have wings? You know, uh, no, because no bell has rung yet. Okay, you just got the, under, it's a wonderful life like this. Okay, but no, we have to use our minds and our ability to describe things that are indescribable. And I promise you, um, if, if, if an angel would appear in front of us tonight and we were to describe it to an artist, 
We can get the greatest artist in the United States. Heck, we can go worldwide, get the greatest artist in the world to paint or to sculpt exactly what we as a group saw tonight. It would never be what we saw. Because I promise you, we'd all sit back and say, yeah, no matter how great, yeah, but there's something more. But yeah, but it, 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 it's more. No human word, no human art that we possess could actually encapsulate the spiritual. It's just always going to be something more. When we think of the great artists, music, painting, sculpture. There's always more when it comes to God in these moments. So we portray the angels because they can move instantaneously in our minds from by our side to heaven to back by our side. We portray them with great eagle's wings for the eagle historically is the greatest of all the birds to fly at the highest. I don't know if that is accurate, but that's the way it's always portrayed. And we would portray the fallen angels with the bat wings. Why? Because the bats were always viewed as something dark and sinister. They came out at night. So when God created, he made these spiritual beings with a great intellect. And as we know, some use their intellect to turn back toward God, their creator, in an act of humility and thank him for their creation. Others would use their intellect to turn within themselves. We say that they have fallen. Now, we know that they fell through either the sin of pride, the sin of envy, but it can't be through a sin like gluttony or lust because those are sins of the body. The angels, when they fail, they has to be a sin of the intellect. Okay? They're spiritual. And when they fail, this is what I would like to offer you tonight, a little idea. That choir line up yonder. If you think about it in your head, the choir loft contains chairs. And when the choir is present, they fill up the chairs in the choir loft. When God created the angels, he created nine choirs of angels. Each choir had a particular mission that would give praise to God through the mission that they performed. Either that mission was to give him praise like the cherubim and seraphim who were closest to him, or by the way they interact with the created world that God would create in his divine plan. Angels, archangels, like our guardian angels. So they were to given in the choirs their thrones, per se, like our chairs in our law. And so when the certain angels, about a third of the angels, fell, those thrones are open. Those thrones that God would make a new creature one that would be able to rise and take the place in that throne that was created. You and I are those new creatures made by God. Creatures that would be spiritual and yet material. And that is when the author of Genesis begins the Bible. In the beginning, God had to create a material world which was able to sustain this new creature, gifted with the traits that he possesses, intellect and will, to be able to do the things that we do. Next week, we're going to see how man abused those gifts and how that, in essence, set in motion the plan that culminates 
here upon this altar this night. May Almighty God be with you. May he bless you. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us stand for our profession of faith, our creed. I, to the King, in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious side. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and the first was Christ. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will not win. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the glory and glory of God, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess my baptism from forgiveness of sins, the night of the Lord is the resurrection dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Come together as one family in faith. We offer to God our prayers and our needs. For the Church of God, that, that in integrity of faith she may await and may welcome with joy Him, to the Immaculate Virgin conceived by a word and wondrously brought to birth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the progress and peace of the whole world that what is given in time may become a reward in eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For those oppressed by hunger, sickness, or loneliness, that through the mystery of the nativity of Christ, they may find relief in both mind and body. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the families of our congregation that receiving Christ, they may also learn also to welcome him in the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all those in our community, both here present and those watching on video who are suffering, whether from physical, emotional, or mental illnesses, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. For all of our intentions spoken and unspoken, joined through the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And let us pray this night. For the repose of the soul of Stephen Barrington, for whom this Mass will be offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude asking Mary, the Mother of God, for her intercessory assistance as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our offertory in this past with violence, number 223, in our mission on page 263. <laughs>
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. The will to come for us, the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. And through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be offered to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord sacrifice to your hands, the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good laws to the church. Except we pray, O Lord, our offering in honor of the appearing of your only begotten Son, and the first fruits of the nations, that to praise that to you praise may be rendered, and eternal salvation be ours, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And it is right and just. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels of thrones to me, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we say to him of your glory is without end we acclaim. <laughs> supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Oh. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in their mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Renewed by the sacred nourishment, we implore your mercy, O Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our minds, and that our true treasure may ever consist in our confession of you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Would you mind having a seat now, please? At this time, our ushers will take up our second collection for our building and maintenance fund. Thank you for your continued generosity. As I mentioned earlier in the hom before the homily the announcements, if you would ever want traditional holy water with the exercise salt and water, all you have to do is ask and get a gallon of distilled water or two gallons, however many you would need. Get you some Morton salt. Bring them to me. I'll bless them for you. So you can have that for your home. It's always a good thing if you have children or grandchildren just to bless them with holy water. To bless yourselves as you're leaving the house or upon entering your house. These are great reminders of our faith. So it's always there. That's why they pay me the big bucks. <laughs> you know? If you need me, just ask. We can do things for you. Okay. Y'all have a blessed night. Thank you. Let us stand and pray our prayer to say hi. Holy Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit of the heavenly. Blessed be the great mother of God and the most holy. Blessed be the holy name of